452. Hydrogen sulfide is bubbled into a solution that is 0.10 molarity in both lead 2 plus and iron 2 plus ions and 0.30 molarity in HCl. After the solution has come to equilibrium, it is saturated with H2S, so the H2S concentration is 0.10 molarity. What concentrations of Pb2 plus and Fe2 plus remain in the solution? For a saturated solution of H2S, we can use this equilibrium. So we have H2S aqueous plus two H2O's liquids uh, yields two H3O pluses and then uh, sulfide two minus. And they give us a K value of one times 10 to the negative 26. Uh, yeah, 10 to the negative 26. And then they say, hint, the H3O plus changes as the metal sulfides precipitate. Okay. So in this case, we're dealing with hydrogen sulfide, right? And they give us a K value. So chances are we're going to have to use our K expression, right? Of products divided by reactants. So I'm just going to write this equation out again. So we have H2S, which is aqueous. This is plus two H2O. And that's a liquid. This will come to equilibrium with two H3O pluses. That's aqueous. And then the sulfide ion two minus, and that's AQ. Okay. And they tell us that the K expression for this is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 26. Now, is there anything that I know that I could fill in? Well, they did tell us that the H2S concentration is 0.1 molarity. So I know that this equilibrium value is 0.10 molarity. Now remember, in terms of equilibrium, no liquids are allowed. So this H2O, it needs to be there for the balanced equation, but as far as math, we don't even care about it. Now I'm just down to these two. Is there any information that I can get from H3O plus or the S2 minus? Well, they did tell us that we had 0.3 molarity in HCl. Now HCl, something should be going off, right? And you said, wait a minute, I've seen HCl before. HCl is one of your strong acids, right? And HCl is always going to break down 100% into H plus and Cl minus. And if we started off with 0 0.30 molarity of the HCl, it's a 1, right? 1 HCl for every 1 H and 1 Cl minus. So my H plus is going to be 0 0.30 molarity, and so is my chloride ion. Now, in this balanced equation, they did say H3O plus. That's the same as H plus. H3O plus and H plus is the same exact thing. Just depends on whether you're dealing with one water or two waters. So I know that the H3O plus concentration is 0 0.30 molarity. And from here, I can solve for what my sulfide ion concentration is. I'll label that as X. So for this balanced equation, the K expression would be concentration of H3O plus. That would have to be squared because there's two of them times the concentration of S2 minus all divided by the H2S. Okay. Now the K value that they gave us for this is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 26th. The H3O plus was 0 0.30, the sulfide ion is X, and the H2S is 0 0.10. So let's go for it. 1.0 times 10 to the negative 26th equals, let's say we have two things, and then we have the one on the bottom. So we have 0 0.30, this has to be squared, times by X over 0 0.10. Yes, let's cross multiply. So if I cross multiply, I'll take this and times it by 0.1. So that would be equal to 1.0 times 10 to the negative 27th equals 0.3 squared is 0 0.09, and that's just x. So if we divide by the point. 0, 0.9 on both sides, 
we will get out our x value. Okay, so 1 times 10 to the negative 27 divided by 0 0.09. I get 1.11 repeatingly times 10 to the negative 26. And that's molarity. And that was the molarity of the S2 minus. So this is the concentration of S2 minus. Okay, so with that concentration, can we make a connection between this value and what's going to precipitate out? Well, if I went in the back of the textbook, I did find that there was two uh, compounds in which had the sulfide ion. There was PBS, that was the lead and the sulfide, and then that was the iron and the sulfide. So I picked those up and I wrote down the um, corresponding KSP values. So from this example, we can find out how much should precipitate, right? So pause the video if you need to. I'm just going to get rid of this equation. The only thing that we need left is that sulfide ion value. So that goes bye-bye. This is just gonna come up here. And it doesn't matter which one we do first. Maybe we could do two at one time. Maybe I'll split this and I'll say, okay, on the left side, we're gonna deal with the, the lead to sulfide. So we have PB, S, that's a solid. This will break down into its two ions. PB2 plus, they told us that. So that's aqueous, it has a charge. And then the sulfide ion, two minus, that's also aqueous. And they told us that, well, we found it out, that the sulfide ion is 1.11 times 10 to the negative 26 molarity. We're trying to find out what is the concentration that's going to be used if this is that concentration. So I'm just going to label this as X. Let's do it for the other one. So we have Fe, S. That's AQ. This gets dissociated into Fe, that's 2 plus aqueous, plus S2 minus aqueous, and the same concentration, 1.11 times 10 to the negative 26 molarity. And we're going to solve for X. Okay, so let's do our KSP equation. KSP is just the concentration of the products. So it'd be PB2 plus times S2 minus for this one, and KSP would equal the concentration of Fe2 plus times S2 minus. No need to raise it to anything because they're all, you know, they all have a one in front, so we don't have to raise it. Okay, now for the PB2 S side, the KSP was the 7.0 times 10 to the negative 29. This is X, and this is 1.11 times 10 to the negative 26. So 7.0 times 10 to the negative 29 equals X times 1.11 times 10 to the negative 26. Solve for x, all we have to do is just divide on both sides by 1.11 times 10 to the negative 26. Okay, this cancels out. And now let's solve for the first one. x equals 7 times 10 to the negative 29 divided by 1.11 times 10 to the negative 26. And I get... 0 0.0063. That looks about right. 0 0.00631, we'll say, molarity. Okay? And that's of the PB2+. So we found out our first answer. So we have 0 0.00631 molarity for the lead 2 plus. That's going to be in the solution from the original 0.1 molarity. And now we just have to do it for the other one. So let's see. The KSP for the iron 
is 3.7 times 10 to the negative 19th. The iron is going to be x, and the sulfide is going to be the 1.11 times 10 to the negative 26. So let's see, 3.7 times 10 to the negative 19th equals x times 1.11 times 10 to the negative 26th. Okay? We're just going to divide on both sides by the value. And see what we get. 1.11 times 10 to the negative 26th. 1.11 times 10 to the negative 26th. So this gets canceled out. And I have 3.7 times 10 to the negative 19th divided by 1.11 times 10 to the negative 26th. And this one, I get a really, really, really big answer. I get 3.33 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Molarity of the iron. Now, wait a minute. Can this be the answer? Well, I only had a max of 0.1 molarity. But in this case, I can have all the way up to 3.33 times 10 to the 7th molarity of the iron. So... How much or what is the concentration that's remaining in the solution? You only had 0.1 molarity, so that's all that you're going to have. Nothing is going to be uh, precipitated. So in this case, you got all that's left here is not going to be precipitated. But in this case, since our answer was lower, the rest of this, if you go above this value, that's going to be precipitated. So even though you had 0.1 molarity of your, you know, your lead, only this much amount is going to be in the solution. So hopefully that makes sense. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video, and I hope you guys are having a great day. Keep studying hard, and I will talk to you all later. Okay, bye-bye.